Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to talk to you about fake animals in zoos. This is um, based on an article that I read in July because I saw that a zoo in Egypt had denied painting black stripes on a donkey to make it look like a zebra. They only denied it once photos had gone viral of the painted donkey. The photos were put online by a student called Ma Mahmoud Sahan and he put the photos on Facebook after seeing this painted donkey in the International Garden Municipal Park in Cairo in Egypt. Besides having very small pointy ears that would not be consistent with a zebra, the animal also had very strange black smudges on its face. As most people know, zebra stripes are not normally smudgy. These pictures obviously went viral very fast and many different experts decided to contribute to the argument. A vet was even contacted by the local news group, the group is called extranews.tv, and the vet said, well, zebras have black snouts and the stripes are generally consistent and parallel. This does not match up with the photo of the animal seen by the student. Apparently there were two such animals in this zoo and both had been painted. When the zoo director was contacted by a local radio station, he insisted that the animal was not fake. But this is not the first time that a zoo has been accused of trying to fool its visitors. In 2009, in Gaza, a zoo painted two donkeys again to look like zebras because they were unable to get animals in around the Israeli blockade. Then in 2012, another Gaza zoo put stuffed animals, so teddy bears, in cages simply because they had an animal shortage. In 2013, a Chinese zoo in Henan province tried to pass off a Tibetan Mastiff dog as an African lion. It was actually quite convincing if you ask me. And in 2017, a zoo in China also disappointed visitors because they put blow up plastic penguins, yes inflatable penguins, in an exhibit. Then weeks later, the same zoo was criticised for displaying plastic butterflies. As you will see, China comes up a lot in my speech because apparently they like the fake animals. So this Tibetan Mastiff dog I mentioned, well, apparently the zoo originally had a lion, which they then replaced with the dog, and it was because the real lion had been sent to a breeding centre. So instead of saying that the exhibit was closed, they decided that it would be better to use the dog, which was actually a pet of one of the people who worked in the zoo, as the fake lion. Of course, as you can imagine, visitors to the zoo were outraged. They said they had been cheated out of their money. And the mystery dog lion creature was discovered when a mother went to the zoo with her son in order to show him the sounds animals make. So they looked at this cage and it was marked African lion. There was a sign descri describing the animal and its characteristics and then the African lion started barking. Then zookeepers had to admit that it was not a lion, it was just a dog that has a very furry brown coat and looked like a lion. The mother was outraged, saying, this zoo is trying to cheat us, disguising dogs as lions. And she obviously could not convince her son that lions bark instead of roar. Other species in the same zoo were apparently mislabeled. There was a fox labelled as a leopard, and many other dogs labelled as wolves. I'm now about halfway through my speech, for those of you who needed to know. Um, let's continue with China 
and the inflatable penguins. This is not actually the first time that inflatable penguins have been used in a zoo. In fact, plastic penguins, as, long as, as well as roosters, geese, and a tortoise were once used in an advert. They had money sprinkled around them and this zoo who created the advert said that it was a rare place to see animals and learn about wildlife. I'm not sure that you can learn much about plastic penguins. So if these, um, if these zoos have to resort to using fake animals, why is that the case? And how, how are the actual animals in zoos? Where do the real animals come from? Well, modern zoos actually cooperate between them pretty extensively. There's lots of lending, giving and trading of animals in the zoo world. Most modern zoos are certi certified by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums and they are not allowed to sell animals to each other. I'm sure that probably does happen, but it's not considered to be the correct way in which zoos should exchange their animals. This doesn't mean that money never changes hands, but zoos tend to take animals on because of breeding recommendations, or having a baby is a huge draw and can bring in thousands and thousands of visitors. When an animal is lent out to another zoo, the contract is generally rather complicated. There can be rights to offspring and this type of thing and breeding rules. Most zoo animals come from other zoos or are born in a zoo. They are not actually wild animals that have been put into a zoo. Let's talk now about confiscation. Some animals live in zoos because they were kept illegally by a private owner. In one particular zoo that was discussed in this article, they had two female lions that came from a lion breeder. The man owned these lions and he owned them legally, but breeding lions was illegal because he was using the lions for the pet trade. And unfortunately, most animals that come to zoos from the pet trade can never be mixed with other animals of the same species simply because they do not know how to interact normally with each other. Also, because the genes of these animals are never recorded, they can never be recommended for breeding programs, so it's very hard for a zoo to convince another zoo to borrow this animal. For example, one zoo confiscated two pancake tortoises. And even though in some areas where this zoo is in North America, they need pancake tortoises to breed, they cannot actually use the tortoises that they have because they don't know their genetics. What about injured wildlife, however? Well, sometimes an animal might come to the zoo from a rehabilitation centre. Perhaps a bird had a broken wing and it didn't heal correctly and it can't fly. In these types of cases, the animal would not be able to survive in the wild, and therefore it needs to be in a permanent captive situation. Some zoos have these types of animals, and they have something called an education collection. These animals tend to go around schools and are shown in classrooms in the zoo as well. Often in this category, you'd also find healthy baby animals that were adopted, lost or orphaned by others. In the old days, most, if not all, zoo animals were originally collected from the wild. They were just caught up, shoved in a box and sent to a zoo. This was really done because people didn't know how to care for animals. So they just thought, that's great, we've caught this animal, we can breed it. And the animals used to be kept on cement floor cages that were far too small. Animals were too stressed to ever breed. But nowadays, of course, I'm not saying that zoos are good, but they have tried to make improvements in the way in which they treat animals. This means that the animals in zoos are easy to breed, generally, unless they're being captured from the wild. And then, of course, the breeding program um, should have good reasons behind it because there isn't really a good excuse for capturing a wild animal. The final category of zoo animals are donated animals. This is kind of similar to confiscated pets, 
But it's a separate category because they are often misunderstood when it comes to zoo animals. Very often, people rush into the idea of buying a pet without really having a realistic view of what they're getting into. For example, some types of parrots, the macaw, are really loud and they can live for 80 years or more. Other animals are super cute, such as a kinkajou, sorry I should have given you this word before, um, it's a bit like a bush baby and has big eyes, they're, but they only, they're only awake at night, they're really messy and they often bite. Alligators might seem really cool, but they can grow 14 feet long, despite the myth that they will only ever grow to the size of their tank. And people often think, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just give my animal to the zoo. But most of this, the time, this is never an option. Many zoos get daily phone calls from pet owners who want to dump their regrettable purchase on the zoo. And if zoos took even half of the animals we off what that were offered to them by private individuals, they'd have no space left. And all these animals come with disadvantages that I already outlined when I discussed confiscated animals. So next time you go to the zoo and you see an inflatable penguin, perhaps it's actually a good thing because that means that there are more happy penguins in the wild.